So I'm here with Steve Fitzsimmons, the new GM of Truro Raceway. Um, we're all very excited to have you here, Steve. We've heard some great things, and uh, we know the future's bright here in Truro now, and uh, we're excited, excited to see how you bring the track to the next level. Well, I'm excited to be here, and uh, I think it's a track with a great promise and opportunity that's just been underachieving for a variety of reasons, and and I'm here to, to help in any way I can to, to improve the fortunes of, of Truro Raceway, the horse people, and uh, and certainly to, to be able to use my marketing background to, to draw additional fans here. Awesome, sounds great. Uh, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and what brought you into the harness racing world? Sure, so my dad, um, he had a couple of horses uh, part-time. He bought a 75-acre farm when I was 10, put a half-mile track on it. It was in a town called Arthur, Ontario. Um, biggest claim to fame for Arthur is they're the home, it's the home of Trevor Henry, you know, one of the nation's top drivers. So. My dad was very good friends with Trevor's brother, George, who helped him get into the harness racing business and, and taught him a lot about it. And the Henrys are great people and they, they opened my, opened with open arms with my dad to, to help him learn because he doesn't have any harness racing background. He bought a horse that uh, came from a fairly large stable that was, I would say a castaway horse, you know, wasn't a non sire State horse. I think that horse taught my dad as much about horse racing as he taught the horse, yeah. which is good, right? And yeah. with the help of the Henry family. And, and so my dad, you know, always had one or two and I ended up, you know, grooming with them and at the, at the racetracks locally. We raced at pretty much three tracks, Elmira, uh, Orangeville and Hanover Raceway, which I ended up becoming the GM of 30 years later. So from groom to GM, it's a strange uh, progression. You never know how things life's going to take you in these weird directions. For sure, horses can teach you a lot about yourself. Yes. Um, so what was the driving factor and you want to come to Truro Raceway? I think the potential of the place. Uh, you know, an underachieving track for a variety of reasons that I think has a bright future. And I think a lot of the things that uh, we were able to, to fix in Hanover are very similar problems that Truro has. So Hanover was a track that when, it, when I became the GM of that track, it was wagering the lowest in the province of Ontario. It was 12th out of 12 tracks. And I was able to take that in three years to the most improved track, basically in the country for wagering and more than doubled the wagering and, and really had an image change too. like the marketing, you know, uh, became maybe the most aggressive in the country and, uh, you know, was very visible. People that follow uh, Hanover Raceway know that uh, there was nobody more active than Hanover Raceway. For sure. That sounds all great. Before we get into some of the questions about what you're going to do here, um, just what kind of hobbies are you into outside of work and, and harness racing? Well, certainly hockey is a huge one. Uh, I was the play-by-play -play voice of the OHL's Guelph Storm for the last 21 years, so that was a lot of fun getting to uh, call hockey at that level. And um, you know, did a couple games on Leafs TV. Um, one time interviewed for an NHL job uh, as a commentator. Um, didn't get it, but uh, you know, that was a neat experience as well. Um, wasn't really a career goal either. You know, I have. I had young kids and, and I didn't really want to, you know, to be away so much from them at that time. But, um, but you know, I got to meet lots of people that have went on to the NHL and have relationships with them. But uh, that was a lot of fun. So hockey, I'd say, is my main one. And I loved, uh, you know, watching hockey, uh, both in person, on TV, talking about hockey endlessly. So it's either, you know, talk harness racing or hockey for me. Um, you know, those are the big two. Awesome. What's your favorite hockey team? You know what? It's it, it's it's a weird question to, for me to answer because I know players on pretty much every NHL team, so I kind of cheer for players more than than teams in particular. So the area that I come from, of course, is huge Leaf country, but I'm actually not necessarily a Leaf fan. But you know, I know lots of players on every team, so I kind of watch players more than more than teams actually. Good to hear you're not a Leaf fan. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is Montreal Canadiens territory, I think, yeah, down here, a lot right? Of people so do like the Habs down yeah. there. Well, you know what? Nick Suzuki, their captain, obviously played for Guelph, went to the Memorial Cup for the Guelph Storm. Uh, so uh, I, I like the Habs. Yeah, he's a wake up player. He is. Um, so fractional ownership is a big thing in Hillerstone. Yeah. Uh, we used to have a Hubtown Horse Owners Club. Um, are we going to be bringing that back? And if so, uh, what would that look like here? We will be bringing it back. Um, my wife and I have been involved with the stable.ca for a lot of years uh, as a in fractional ownership and I've always had a few horses with them. It, it's a great way to introduce uh, new fans to the sport for a very affordable cost where you don't have to shoulder all of the costs on your own. So so the Hubtown Horse Owners Group, I mean, they did good work a number of years ago. So we're going to have a couple horses with the Hubtown Horse Owners Group 
and uh, you know they'll be with two different trainers and uh, you know people can buy you know a share into that and, and enjoy watching them all season and and you know obviously we want them to get up close with the horses and of course with trainers and drivers as well uh, we think that's a, a great experience to, for, especially for new people to be part of the sport, but even people that just can't afford to be in the sport on their own with a horse on, you know, 100% ownership. So take, you know, 1%, 2%, whatever you want and, and have fun with it. And, and to be honest with you, like my wife and I have found, we've, you know, we've owned a horse on our own. We've owned 1% of a horse and we find the enjoyment levels very much the same. But the bills are quite different, so that's the important part there. You know, you, you can have just as much fun owning 1% or 2% as owning 100%, but the bills are quite a bit less, so that's all good. Yeah, there's no better feeling than winning a horse race. Absolutely not. the yeah. juice is flowing. Yep. So, um, you've only been here for a few weeks, so I'm not yep. going to pound too many questions at you, but uh, can you give Truro Raceway the fans just a little teaser of your vision for uh, this upcoming racing season? Sure. Uh, well, the first thing is we need to get the grandstand open, and I'm sure you know that's going to happen in, in due course here fairly soon, I hope. Uh, I don't know if it'll be for opening day. I'm really hoping it will. I think the contractors are certainly pushing to, to the opening day, but, but if not, um, you know, we're going to really have some great marketing ideas that are going to bring fans to the track, and I think that's going to be paired up with, with I, what I think is a really good racing product here that just maybe hasn't been showcased in the right way and marketed properly. Uh, so, you know, that's something that I've done a really good job with and yeah, elsewhere and I'm going to bring that marketing uh, you know, acumen here, but uh, I think you'll see a lot of event marketing on specific things, but I'll throw out one that I think is a really cool thing that we're probably going to do is we're going to probably have mini horses races here um, between races um, on a specific day and we'll have the mini horses come over on the tarmac and people can pet them and get their photos taken. It's something that uh, we did last year at Hanover and a lot of families came and just loved that. And you know, you get your, your picture taken with the little guy and, and uh, the little kids can get up close and, and, and uh, you know, just see and pet those, those little guys. And so, and it's a neat little spectacle. You know, they only race from the top of the stretch down type thing, but, but it drew a lot of extra fans that typically wouldn't come to the racetrack. So it's certainly something that'll be in our, in our marketing uh, here. We're gonna do that one day here. Um, once we know when the grandstand is going to be open, I'll, I'll really put a focus on individual days, what we're going to do in each of those. And um, so I think you're going to see a lot more of that marketing. And to be fair to the, to Truro in the last couple of years, it, you don't, you didn't really want to focus on that because we didn't want people to have this customer experience that they've had with no food and drink, no amenities. That's just not what we're about. You know, we want people to come and enjoy their experience and have those things that are all part of that experience. And uh, when we get back to it, we're going to really market hard, I can tell you that. Awesome. That all sounds good to me. Um, so, I'm sure everyone's here to hear the rapid fire around again. All, all right. right. Bring uh, it on. Got some. Got uh, five funny questions here for you. Sure. Um, so, let's get right to it. All right. So, rock and roll or country music? Actually, neither. Uh, 80s music is 80s my thing. Music. Yep. What's your favorite band? Uh, probably Tears for Fears. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, burgers or pizza? Both. Okay. <laughs> Um, Have you seen my gut? Both, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a movie is being made about your life. Who would you choose to play you in the film? Oh, probably Liam Neeson. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so I'm going to say this slow. Okay. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Probably easier to tackle one than 100. I, I'll get attacked on all sides with the 100, so I'll go with the one. Okay. That's, that's a it's a bold choice. <laughs> um, so you've had, you've told me before this you've had uh, race horses before, but yep. uh, if you got a new one right now and you can name it anything you want, what would you name? It? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> I've certainly named race horses before. Um, I don't know what I'd name it right now. I'd probably have a contest and let the fans name it. Oh, actually. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe we'll yeah. have to do that in the future. Maybe we will. Yeah. Well, Steve, it's been great. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell the fans about your meet upcoming meeting, where you're going to be sharing more about your plans. But uh, yeah, um, so I, I have an upcoming meeting a, a week from now uh, with all the horse people, just to share some some uh, additional details about what our plan is. So uh, I think they'll have a lot more confidence. I hope they'll have a lot more confidence in the direction we're going to take and. I'm going to go through some specific things with them, um, and one of those things, to be honest, is is our wagering menu is going to be much improved this year, and we're going to have one signature thing that I won't share with you quite yet, but uh, it's going to be something that it'll catch the attention of wa of wagering people all across the country, actually. So 
Awesome. Watch for that. Ending it on a cliffhanger. I you like got it. it. Keeping everyone interested. Yeah. Well, Steve, you've been a great sport today. I really appreciate you coming on and telling everyone about your upcoming plans and got to a little, got to learn a little bit more about who's uh, taking over here. So it's awesome to hear. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you.